Lecture 37. Assalamu alaikum. Welcome to the Virtual University's course on Business and Technical Communication. In today's lecture, we are going to continue our language review and continue looking at sentences. We are going to look at sentence problems because which are caused due to lack of parallelism, uh, problems because of uh, choppy sentences. We are going to look at misplaced modifiers, uh, how they in can interrupt uh, sentence structure. We are going to look at uh, modifiers of nouns and adverb modifiers and see how we can use them effectively. We are also going to look at dangling modifiers. Another common uh, error in sentences is the use of double negatives and we are going to look at how we can improve that. We are also going to look at inappropriate shifts within sentences. These shifts could be in tense, mood, person or voice. We will uh, learn about the uh, correct use of sequence of tenses and pronoun reference. Pronoun reference uh, problems could be caused because of unclear pronoun reference or broad pronoun reference and we will see what these two mean. And we will also look at pronoun case. Let us have a look first at uh, problems in sentences which are caused because of lack of parallelism. What do we mean by parallelism? Parallelism refers to the principle that parts of a sentence that are the same in function should be the same in structure. Words or phrases joined by a coordinating conjunction should have the same form. Basically this means that the sentences should be parallel in uh, whatever clauses that they have. All the clauses, all the phrases in a sentence should be parallel if they are um, performing a parallel function. Let us have a look at a few examples. An unacceptable sentence would be an important consideration in orthopedic surgery and how to implant prosthesis is the possibility of infection. Now in this example as you see there are two different phrases that are not parallel in structure. An important consideration in orthopedic surgery is one, the other is how to plant prosthesis is the other and they are not uh, in parallel structure. The improved version would be an important consideration in orthopedic surgery and prosthesis implants is the possibility of infection. Similarly, uh, it would be unacceptable to say the comparison will cover possible mechanisms of change. This is a noun phrase. How the fissures widen because of regional uh, tectonic stress, this is a noun clause and are there changes in permeability from increased micro cracking? This is a question. Now when you are listing three different things, then again you will need to make sure that all the, th the three different elements are parallel in structure. You cannot have one noun phrase, one as a noun clause and one as a question. Let us see how to improve this. It would be better to say the comparison will cover possible mechanis mechanisms of change, noun phrase ho gaya. Fissure widening from regional tectonic stress, ye bhi noun phrase ho gaya. And permeability from incre increased micro cracking, ye bhi noun phrase ho gaya. So now the, all three are in, uh, have the same structure and they are um, performing the same function as in they are part of a list. When you are attempting to write uh, sentences that are parallel, make sure that all headings and subheadings are parallel with other headings and subheadings of the same level. Uh, make sure all entries of the same level in an outline are parallel as well. Let us work on an example. It would be unacceptable to say three strategies for developing tooling systems for high speed machining and then the subheadings being how chemically stable materials are made, the other subheading being diffusion limited wear regimes. The first was a noun clause, second is a noun phrase and the third heading being isolate the tool from the workplace which is an imperative. Agar aap keh rahe hain ki main heading hai strategies for developing tooling systems aur phir aap teen different strategies bata rahe hain to aapki teenon different strategies jo hain wo different uh, type ki nahi ho sakti. You cannot have one strategy phrased as a noun clause, one strategy phrased as a noun phrase and one strategy phrased as an imperative. Aapko teenon ko hi ek hi form mein dena padega. It would be more acceptable to say something like a uh, main heading of the strategies for developing uh, tooling systems for high speed machining or phir aap teeno strategies jo hain wo noun phrase ke taur pe dein yani aap kahein chemically stable materials diffusion limited uh, wear regimes 
आपने जो कि पहले नाउन फ्रेज नाउन क्लॉज था हाउ केमिकली स्टेबल मटीरियल्स आर मेड इसको आपने नाउन फ्रेज कर दिया केमिकली स्टेबल मटीरियल्स बना दिया दूसरा तो आपका नाउन फ्रेज था ही डिफ्यूजन लिमिटेड वे रिजीम्स और तीसरा जो इम्पेरेटिव था आइसोलेट द टूल फ्राम द वर्क प्लेस इसको भी आप नाउन फ्रेज बनाएंगे और आप कहेंगे आइसोलेटेड टूल टूल्स फ्राम द वर्क प्लेस ऑल्सो यू नीड टू अवॉयड चॉपी सेंटेंसेज अवॉयड यूजिंग टू मैनी सेंटेंसेज दैट विल क्रिएट अ चॉपी प्रोज और चॉपी इफेक्ट इन योर प्रोज चॉपी इफेक्ट का मतलब कि आप हमें पढ़ने वाले को ये लगे कि बार बार आपकी बात कट रही है Vary your sentence types and combine short related sentences by making uh, some elements dependent uh, clauses or phrases. अगर आपके sentences बहुत uh, short short sentences साथ साथ आ रहे हैं तो कुछ sentences को आप combine कीजिए कुछ short sentences को dependent clause कीजिए और कुछ को independent कीजिए ताकि आपके sentences में जो है वो variety आ सके कंपेयर द फॉलोइंग चॉपी सेंटेंसेज एंड देयर इम्प्रूव वर्जन The weak version is on the screen in front of you. Let's have a look at how this is improved. As you can see, the short sentences have been combined to form slightly longer sentences and this uh, gives much more cohesion and uh, a much more effective impression of the sentence another problems with sentences in english is misplaced modifier modifiers this means that modifiers are not in the place where they should be they are at some other place in the sentence to ensure clarity place your modifiers clearly make sure that your placement of modifiers does not interrupt the sentence stru structure or uh, create ambiguity if your modifier is not placed properly then it can do two things it can either um, interrupt the sentence structure or it can create ambiguity which will mean that the sentence will not be very clear placing a modifier between the subject and the verb or between the verb and the direct object can weaken the structure of the sentence and it can make the sentence difficult to inter uh, interpret so try not to have your modifier between the subject and the verb also try not to have your modifier between the verb and the direct object kyunki isse ye hoga ki aapke subject aur verb ki continuity toot jayegi ya agar aapke verb aur direct object ke darmiyan modifier hua to unka jo connection hai wo toot jayega aur sentence ko interpret karna mushkil ho jayega in general the longer and more complicated the modifier the more it weakens द सेंटेंस आपका जो भी मॉडिफायर हो उसको कोशिश करें कि वो छोटा हो क्योंकि अगर लंबा मॉडिफायर होगा जितना भी जितना ज़्यादा कॉम्प्लिकेटेड मॉडिफायर होगा उतना आपका सेंटेंस जो है वो समझने में मुश्किल हो जाएगा जैसे कि हमने पिछले लेक्चर में भी देखा था हमने स्टैक्ड uh, मॉडिफायर्स देखे थे कि एक ही मॉडिफायर के साथ बहुत सारे और मॉडिफायर्स लगे हों इसी तरह अगर आपका मॉडिफायर बहुत लंबा होगा तब भी वही इफेक्ट आएगा कि क्लियर नहीं होगा कि वो किस चीज़ को मॉडिफाई कर रहे हैं और इसका मतलब क्या है ऑल दो यू कैन ऑफन गेट अवे विद इंटरप्टिंग द स्ट्रक्चर ऑफ द सेंटेंस विद अ शॉर्ट वन वर्ड मॉडिफायर एडिंग अ लॉन्गर मॉडिफायर सिग्निफिकेंटली वर्सन द सेंटेंस मैंने पहले भी आपको लेक्चर्स में बताया था कि आप सेंटेंस के दरमियान मॉडिफायर इस्तेमाल कर सकते हैं लेकिन वो फिर मॉडिफायर छोटा होना चाहिए अगर बहुत लंबा मॉडिफायर होगा एक सेंटेंस के बीच में तो फिर सेंटेंस का इफेक्ट खराब हो जाएगा मॉडिफायर्स ऑफ नाउन्स शुड बी प्लेस्ड इधर इमीजिएटली बिफोर और इमीजिएटली आफ्टर द नाउन इफ एन अदर फ्रेज इज अलाउड टू सेपरेट द नाउन एंड इट्स मॉडिफायर द मॉडिफायर मे बी मिस इंटरप्रेटेड और एज अप्लाइंग टू अ नाउन इन द सेपरेटिंग फ्रेज रादर दैन टू द ओरिजिनल नाउन तो इसलिए कोशिश करें कि आपके नाउन uh, और मॉडिफायर के दरमियान कोई और फ्रेज ना आए जो आपका मॉडिफायर है वो जिस नाउन को वो मॉडिफाई कर रहा है उस नाउन नाउन के पास करीब ही वो रहे क्योंकि अगर बीच में कोई और फ्रेज आ गया तो पढ़ने वाले को ये नहीं पता चलेगा कि जो मॉडिफायर है वो ओरिजिनल नाउन को मॉडिफाई कर रहा है या फ्रेज के अंदर जो नाउन है उसको मॉडिफाई कर रहा है लेट्स है लुक एट सम एग्जाम्पल्स 
a weak a sentence would be more than 750 metric tons of lead ingots were examined by the quality control inspectors that circle the base of the tower. Now, this sentence is not going to be able ingots base of the tower ko circle kar rahe hain ya quality control inspectors base of the tower ko circle kar rahe hain because when you say that so many ingots were examined by the inspectors that circle the base of the tower isse to impression ye lagta hai ki jo inspectors hain wo tower ki base ko circle kar rahe the jabki improved version ye hoga more, more than 750 metric tons of lead ingots that circle the base of the tower were examined by the quality control inspectors ek aur example dekhte hain for the most part we considered computer simulations that mimic the lamprey's neural activity only this sentence suggests that of more than one feature of the lamprey's behavior or more than one kind of activity the investigation singled out neural activity again possibly true but that is not what the author wished to communicate A core example, the Huron, Egret and Stork colonies in Everglades National Park that once each contained tens of thousands of birds whose bustling extravagance helped inspire the fa uh, founding in 1905 of the National Association of Audubon Societies, later the National Audubon Society, have shrunk by 95% uh, since the 1930s. Now the improved version would be the bird colonies in Everglades National Park once each contained tens of thousands of birds whose bustling extravagance helped inspire the founding in 1905 of the National Associ Association of Audubon Societies, later the National Audubon Society. Full stop. These colonies of herons, egrets and stork have shrunk by 95% since the 1930s. Similarly, a weak a sentence would be where you say inventors unlocked more than a century ago the secrets of turning the sun's rays into mechanical power. Now the improved way of saying this sentence would be inventors unlocked the secrets of turning the sun's rays into mechanical power more than a century ago. Similarly, saying the ability to assemble structures at the atomic scale will require the development of molecular assemblers, uh, tiny programmable robots able to uh, precisely provide positional chemical bonding. The improved version would be the ability to assemble structures at the atomic scale will require the development of molecular assembl assemblers, tiny programmable robots able to provide precise positional chemical bonding. Preci to precisely provide ke bajaye, humne usko to provide precise positional chemical bonding kar diya, isse sentence zyada clear ho gaya. Now adverb modifiers, abhi tak to humne baat ki thi, nouns ko jab hum modify kaya thai, ab hum adverb modifiers ki baat karte hai. Adverbs should be placed as close as possible to the wor uh, words or phrases that they modify. Adverbs humne, humne pata hai ki adverbs hote hai helping words, jo uh, kisi na kisi lafs ke saath istamal ke jate hai, unko additional meaning dene ke liye. They should be placed as close as possible to the words or phrases that they modify. If you allow an adverb to be separated from the word or phrase that it modifies, the interpretation of the adverb may become ambiguous. Just tarah ke humne baat ki jab hum noun kisi noun kisi cheez ko modify karne ke liye lagate hain, to uske karib tarin lagana chahiye. Isi tarah jab hum adverb bhi kisi laf ke saath lagate hain, to usko bhi uske ek pass mein hi lagana chahiye. Always place a quantity adverb immediately before the word that it modifies. Adverb uh, modifies ka example dekhte hain. For all its richness, today's Everglades is a drastically diminished place. Ab drastically ka matlab hai to a great extent. Now this is an adverb of quantity and it should be, it, it is as you see here placed right before diminished. Be specially careful with the placement of the adverbs only and just. Ye do adverbs aise hain ki inko बहुत ख्याल रखना है आपने कि आपने कहाँ लगाया है इनको कहाँ इस्तेमाल किया क्योंकि इनका इस्तेमाल से पूरे सेंटेंस का मीनिंग बहुत ज़्यादा चेंज हो सकता है। It can also make the meaning of the sentence ambiguous and change it to a great extent. Let's have a look at some examples where we are using only in different places in the same sentence and let's see how that movement of that single adverb 
changes the complete meaning of the sentence. For the most part, we considered only computer simulations that mimic the lamprey's neural activity. This sentence suggests that of various simulations the investigators might have considered, they focused on just one uh, just uh, of a certain sort. This is perhaps true, but not what the author wished to communicate. Is he sentence ko dekhte hain jab only kisi aur jaga pe laga ho? For the most part, we considered computer simulations that only mimic the lamprey's neural activity. This sentence suggests that some computer simulations might do more than mimic. This is nonsense since all simulations just mimic the process that they are simulating. Similarly, changing the uh, place of only again, for the most part we considered computer simulations that mimic only the Lamprey's neural activity. This is in fact how the author wrote the sentence. Though out of context, the se sentence is still ambiguous. The uh, is the point that the neural activity only of the lamprey but not of other animals was the focus of the investigation or that only neural activity was to be simulated. Just like you can see only ki diff different jaga pe laga ke khasa meaning mukhtalif ho jata hai aur khasi ambiguity bhi aa jati hai. So, this way isko bohat ehtiyat se istamal karein. Uh, when we talk of dangling modifiers, abhi tak humne baat ki thi misplaced modifiers ki now when we talk of dangling modifiers, let's see what we mean by that. A dangling modifier or a modifier whose connection to the sentence is implied or intended but not actually made explicit is said to dangle. Jab ek modifier hai jiska jo connection hai sentence se wo implied hai ya लिखने वाले का तो मतलब है कि उस मॉडिफायर का कोई कनेक्शन हो सेंटेंस से बट उस सेंटेंस को पढ़ने वाले को वो उस कनेक्शन क्लियर नहीं हो रहा तो फिर वो मॉडिफायर डैंगलिंग होता है क्योंकि वो उसके अंदर क्लियरली नजर नहीं आ रहा होता डैंगलिंग मॉडिफायर्स डिट्रैक्ट फ्रॉम द क्लैरिटी ऑफ योर राइटिंग दे टेक अवे फ्रॉम द क्लैरिटी ऑफ योर राइटिंग सो यू शुड मेक श्योर दैट योर मॉडिफायर्स आर प्रॉपरली कनेक्टेड टू द वर्ड्स दैट दे मॉडिफायर टू रिपेयर अ डैंगलिंग मॉडिफायर add a noun or phrase that the modifier was intended to modify in the first place and then rephrase the sentence accordingly. Jo bhi um, noun ya phrase tha jis ki aapki niyat thi likhne wale as, as a writer aapki niyat thi ke ye modifier is noun ya phrase ko modify kare aap usko clearly us noun ya phrase ko clearly sentence ke andar istemal kijiye taake पढ़ने वाले के लिए आपको पता चले कि आप किस चीज को मॉडिफाई कर रहे हैं लेट्स हैव अ लुक एट एन एग्जांपल वेयर इफ द राइटर सेज व्हेन ट्रैवलिंग एट द स्पीड ऑफ साउंड द मून इज अप्रोक्सीमेटली 320 आवर्स अवे नाउ दिस इंप्लाइज दैट द मून ट्रैवल्स एट द साउंड ऑफ स्पीड वेयर एज द मून डज नॉट ट्रैवल एट द साउंड ऑफ स्पीड द इंप्रूव्ड वर्जन वुड बी एन ऑब्जेक्ट Traveling at the speed of sound will reach the moon in approximately 320 hours. Because when traveling at the sound of speed, say, ये नहीं पता चल रहा कि what is traveling. क्योंकि जिकर moon का है तो ये लगता है कि the moon is traveling. Also, try not to use double negatives. In fact, you should never use double negatives in your sentences. Use only one negative word to express a negative idea. In English, if you use Two negatives, it makes a positive. Uh, let's consider an example. It would be unacceptable to say the water management model simulated how water would flow through today's Everglades if all the pumps, gates and other water control devices had not never been built. Now, not never means at some time. So, these two negatives milke positive. Ho the acceptable sentence would be the water management model simulated how water would flow through today's Everglades if all the pumps, gates and other water control devices had never been built. Yeah, not ki zarurat nahi hai kyunki aap never keh rahe hai. Another um, commonly found mistake with sentences is that of faulty comparison. Where comparing one item uh, with another can be a very powerful way of uh, describing an object or a process. You need to be sure that what you are comparing is actually comparable with uh, its counterpart. So, all the things that are being compared need to be of the same type. Uh, to make your comparison effective, 
uh, you must maintain parallelism in your comparison uh, and include the basis of your comparison and ensure that your comparison is not ambiguous. When you construct a comparison, you must make the two items being compared parallel in structure. We parallelism in this lecture. कि जो भी चीजें एक सेंटेंस में हो जिनका फंक्शन एक हो उनका स्ट्रक्चर एक हो इसी तरह जब हम कंपेयर अगर दो चीजों को कर रहे हैं तो उनका भी स्ट्रक्चर जो दो चीजें कंपेयर की जा रही हैं उनका भी स्ट्रक्चर जो है वो पैरेलल होना चाहिए इट वुड बी अनएक्सेप्टेबल टू से इकोलॉजिकल मॉडलिंग जो कि नाउन फ्रेज है इज इवन मोर डिफिकल्ट देन टू कंस्ट्रक्ट अ हाइड्रोलॉजिकल मॉडल जो कि इंफिनिटिव फ्रेज है इट वुड बी मोर एक्सेप्टेबल टू से Ecological modeling, which is a noun phrase, hai, is, more, is even more difficult than hydrological modeling. This is a noun phrase. Hai. Also, incomplete comparison detract from the clarity of the writing. If your comparisons are not complete, then your writing is not clear. To be complete, a comparison must include both the item being compared and the item with which it is being compared. अगर आप चाहते हैं कि आपका कंपैरिजन मुकम्मल हो तो फिर आप उस आइटम को तो इंक्लूड करेंगे ही जिसको आप कंपेयर कर रहे हैं लेकिन आपने ये ख्याल रखना है कि वो आइटम भी इंक्लूडेड हो जिसके साथ कंपेयर किया जा रहा है अगर दोनों आइटम्स इंक्लूडेड नहीं होंगे तो आपका जो कंपैरिजन है वो इनकम्प्लीट होगा इफ यू लीव आउट द मेन आइटम बींग कंपेयर्ड विद द रीडर विल नॉट अंडरस्टैंड योर इंटेंडेड मीनिंग फॉर एग्जाम्पल it would be unacceptable to say ecological modeling is more difficult. More difficult than what? Aapne is cheez ki to wazahat ki hi nahi hai ki kis cheez se zyada mushkil hai. It would be acceptable to say ecological modeling is more difficult than hydrological modeling. Ab yaha aap comparison de rahe hain dono kisam ki modeling ka. Similarly, it would be unacceptable to say Ever since the early 1960s, when the Corps, uh, Corps of Engineers completed the Central and Southern Florida Flood Control Project, the area's fresh water has been shunted uh, through 1,400 miles of canals and levees, 150 gates and spillways, and si 16 of the largest pumping stations. Ab ye jo akhri mein kaha, akhir mein kaha, the largest pumping stations, largest where? Largest pumping stations in the project, largest pumping stations in the area, largest pumping stations in the world. Kis cheez se aap compare karke unko largest bata rahe hain. Acceptable uh, version would be ever since the early 1960s when the Corps of Engineers completed the Central and Southern Florida Flood Control Project, the area's fresh water has been shunted through 1,400 miles of canals and levees, 150 gates and spillways and 16 of the largest pumping stations in the world. Similarly, an unaccepted, uh, unacceptable version would be the symposium revealed that more was no, uh, known than realized. Ab mo, ab yahan ab kya kehna cha rahe hain? Realized ko kis matlab mein istamal kiya ja raha hai? Are you trying to say more was known than was accomplished or more was known than was thought? Realize ka accomplish wala meaning aap le rahe hain ya realize ka thought wala meaning aap le rahe hain? The accepted way would be the symposium revealed that more was known than we realized. Also, Van, uh, Von Neumann took a very different approach towards artificial intelligence, AI, than other computer scientists. Ab yaha, what are you trying to say? Are you trying to say that his approach towards AI was different from his approach towards other computer scientists? Or are you trying to say that his approach uh, was different from the approach of other computer scientists. आपने ये clarify करना है कि आप किस चीज़ के साथ compare कर रहे हैं। आप uh, von Neumann की approach जो है वो दूसरे computer scientists की तरफ जो है उससे compare कर रहे हैं या उसकी approach को दूसरे computer scientists की approach से compare कर रहे हैं। The acceptable form would be von Neumann took a very different approach towards AI than other computer scientists did. Ye pata chala ga ke dusre computer scientists ki approach se aap compare kar rahe hain. So, this was when we talked about comparisons and how to make sure that the comparisons in your sentences were uh, correct and that you were not missing out on what was being compared with and also that your comparisons were parallel in structure. Another common uh, error 
is that of inappropriate shifts when uh, in the tense of the sentence. You need to be consistent in your choice of tense, mood, person and voice. Aapki shifting nahi honi chahiye. Tense mein, mood mein, person ya voice. In charon cheezo mein aapko consistent rehna hoga taake aap achhe sentences, effective sentences likh sake. Shifting any of these categories without good reason will detract from the clarity of your writing again. As a general rule, verb tenses within a sentence or paragraph should be consistent. A shift in tense without reason distorts the sequence of events being de described and will confuse your reader. Agar aap khama khame bagair kisi reason ke jo aapka verb hai, usko shift karenge, uska tense shift karenge, to phir aapka jo pahne wale hai, wo confuse ho jayenge ke kya cheez pehle hui, kya cheez baad mein hui. Agar aap past tense istamal karen, to past tense mein hi rahiye aur bagair kisi reason ke usko present tense ya future tense mat ki jay. For example, let's have a look at uh, a piece of writing where the tenses have shifted. Uh, it says, surgery made critical advances in the 19th century. The discovery of anesthesia by Crawford Long in 1842 and W.T.G. Morton in 1846 gave doctors greater freedom to put their new anatomical knowledge to practical use. After Louis Pasteur discovered that microorganisms caused infections, Joseph Lister 1827 to 1912, a young Scottish sur surgeon realized that antiseptic surgical techniques would allow surgeons to suture wounds and avoid infection. Yahan tak to past tense mein baat ho rahi hai. Ab dekhte hai ki aage kaise tense shift ho gaya. Finally, Röntgen reports his discovery of x-rays in 1895 which is immediately put to practical use in surgical, uh, surgical diagnosis. Ab yahan dekhe ki ye aakhri sentence mein jo tense hai wo Present tense ho gaya, jabke abhi tak past tense istamal ho raha tha. Aur yaha present tense appropriate nahi hai, kyunke jo zikar ho raha hai, wo bhi baatein aisi hain, jo pehle ho chuki hain. To isle yaha bhi past tense hi hona chahiye tha. Let's have a look at the improved version. Apart from being consistent in tense, you also need to be consistent in your choice of mood. A shift in mood without reason will confuse your readers. For example, do not combine an imperative clause with an indicative clause in the same sentence. We are going to have a look at an example which will make this clearer. It would be unacceptable to say, read the instructions carefully, which is imperative mood, hai, and then to continue the sentence in the indicative mood by saying, and you must assemble the equipment completely before beginning the procedure. Yahan aapne imperative or indicative ko combine kar diya hai. Now let's have a look at the acceptable version. It would be better to say, read the instructions carefully and assemble the equipment completely. Dono imperative mein ho gaya, dono instructions ho gaya, order sa ho gaya before beginning the procedure. Ek aur example dekhte hain, jis mein mood shift kiya gaya hain aur phir e uska improved version dekhte hain ki mood kaise dono mein ek hai. One use for Van Neumann machines proposes a single space seed self-replicating factory that could be sent to another world where upon landing it will collect raw materials and build more copies of itself to accomplish some enormous engineering project. Isi ka acceptable version zyada jis mein shift na ho wo ye hai. One use for Van Neumann uh, machines proposes a single space seed self-replicating factory that could be sent to another world where upon landing it would collect raw materials and build more copies of itself to accomplish some enormous engineering project. Jaysay ki aapne dekha, yahaan bhi could aur would mein aapas mein parallelism hai, jabke pichle sentence mein could aur will mein jo mood tha wo shift ho raha tha. When you are choosing your tenses, you need to choose the tenses of your verbs accurately to express the timing of the or the sequence of events that you are describing. Often the particular sequence of events that you are describing will require you to use several different verb phrases or several, several different verb tenses within a single sentence or paragraph. And then it is absolutely uh, all right to shift your tense because you have a particular reason. If you are describing what you are describing, 
سیکوینس آف ایونٹس ہی اس طرح ہے کہ کچھ چیزیں پاسٹ میں ہوئیں کچھ پریزنٹ میں اور کچھ فیوچر میں تب تو آپ اپنے ٹینس شفٹس کر سکتے ہیں لیکن اگر ہر چیز پاس ٹینس میں ہو رہی ہے اور آپ ٹینس شفٹ کر رہے ہیں تو وہ غلط ہے اگر آپ کے پاس ریزن ہے ٹینس شفٹ کرنے کا تو پھر آپ ٹینسز کو شفٹ کر سکتے ہیں آل دو اٹ از اپروپریٹ ٹو ویری یور ٹینسز ان اکارڈنس ود دی ایکچوئل ٹائمنگ آف دی ایونٹس یو شوڈ اوائڈ شفٹنگ ٹینسز ان نیسیسرلی بی ویری کلیئر ان یور مائنڈ دیٹ اٹ از ایکچولی نیسیسری ٹو شفٹ دا ٹینس ہیئر اف یو کین ناٹ سی اے گڈ ریزن ٹو شفٹ دا ٹینس دین stick to the tense that you have been using Sp- pay special attention to how you express uh, the sequence of uh, events or the sequence of tenses when you're describing the timing of events or when you're paraphrasing ideas so that you are not shifting tenses at the wrong place and that so that your tense shifting is not uh, irrelevant let's have a look at some examples where tense shifts are used incorrectly Here it says on the screen, before the development of anesthesia techniques, surgeons would prepare their patients for surgery by getting them drunk. A better version, improved version would be, before the development of anesthesia techniques, surgeons prepared their patients for surgery by getting them drunk. Similarly, at tomorrow's meeting, she will officially announce she will be chosen yesterday to lead the government research project. Now here, obviously, uh, the uh, tense will be chosen does not match with the word yesterday which is supposed to be in the past so it would be acceptable to say at tomorrow's meeting she will officially announce she was chosen yesterday to lead the government research project it would be similarly unacceptable to say the engineer informed us that she is uh, not able to field test the device yesterday because it is raining here the tenses both the tenses used are in the present but the sequence of events that is being talked about is in the past so the uh, tenses are not corresponding with the sequence of events it would be more acceptable to say the engineer informed us that she was not able to field test the device yesterday because it was raining if a previously spoken idea is a general fact that is always true or concerns a future event that has not yet occurred You can either maintain the original verb tense of the idea or shift them to past tense to match the tense of the verb you used to introduce the idea. Agar aapne jis cheez ke baare mein baat ki, agar aap pehle ek idea ke baare mein baat kar chuke hain aur wo ek general fact hai, koi aisi cheez hai jo hamesha hi sahi hoti hai ya koi aisi cheez hai jo us cheez ka hawala de rahi hai jo ke future mein hona hai lekin abhi hua nahi hai. Tab aap ya to جو بھی آپ نے ٹینس استعمال کیا تھا ورب کا اس کو مینٹین کر سکتے ہیں یا اس کو پاس ٹینس میں شفٹ کر سکتے ہیں تاکہ آپ کا جو ورب کا ٹینس ہے وہ اوریجنل آئیڈیا کے ٹینس سے میچ کر جائے مینٹیننگ دی اوریجنل ٹینس ایمفسائزز دی کنٹینیوئنگ ویلیڈیٹی آف دی آئیڈیا ویئر از شفٹنگ دا ورب ٹینس ایمفسائزز دی نیرٹیو کوالٹی آف دی پیراف्रेज جیسا کہ ہم اگلی سلائڈ میں دیکھیں گے کہ جب اوریجنل ٹینس رکھا گیا تو آئیڈیا کی ویلیڈیٹی کنٹینیوشن رہی اور جب اس کو شفٹ کیا گیا تو نیرٹیو کوالٹی آ گئی پیراف्रेज کی ناؤ کمنگ ٹو پروناؤن ریفرنس پروناؤن ریفرنس ریفرس ٹو دی آئیڈینٹیفیکیشن آف اے پروناؤن ود وچ ود اٹس انٹینڈیڈ اینٹیسیڈنٹ جو ایک پروناؤن ہے وہ جس چیز کی بات کر رہا ہے جس چیز کو ریفر کر رہا ہے وہ آپس میں کتنا میچ کرتے ہیں جو پروناؤن ہے وہ آئیڈینٹیفائی کر سکتا ہے اپنے اینٹیسیڈنٹ کے ساتھ یا نہیں اس چیز کو ہم پروناؤن ریفرنس کہتے ہیں ٹو کامن پرابلمس ان پروناؤن ریفرنس آر انکلیئر پروناؤن ریفرنس اینڈ براڈ پروناؤن ریفرنس یو نیڈ ٹو میک شیور دیٹ آل یور پروناؤنس کین بی ایزیلی آئیڈینٹیفائڈ بیکاز اف دے آر انکلیئر اور اف دے آر ٹو براڈ دین دی میننگ ول بی لاسٹ اگر آپ کے پروناؤنس جو ہیں وہ کلیئر نہ ہوں کہ کس چیز کی بات کر رہے ہیں یا انکلیئر ہیں اور اینٹیسیڈنٹ سے میچ نہیں کر رہے یا اتنے براڈ ہیں کہ وہ ایک سے زیادہ چیز کو ریفر کر سکتے ہیں سینٹنس میں یا پیراگراف میں تو جو میننگ ہے وہ اتنا صاف پتہ نہیں چلے گا یو ول یوز اے پروناؤن انسٹیڈ آف اے ناؤن اونلی اف دی کنیکشن 
with the intended antecedent is very clear. Yani agar aap ek pronoun istemal kar rahe hain to phir ye khayal rakhe ki jis cheez ke jis jis noun ki jagah aap us pronoun ko istemal kar rahe hain to padhne wale ko ye pata chale clearly ki kis noun ka zikr ho raha hai. For example agar aap keh rahe agar aap kisi ka naam lene ke bajaye aap hi keh rahe hain Salim ka zikr aapne karna hai aur aap hi keh rahe hain to aap ye dhyan rakhe ki jo padhne wale hain unko bhi ye pata chale ki aap Salim ka hi zikr kar rahe hain na ke kisi aur ka. Also, make sure that no other nouns with the same gender and number appear between your pronoun and its intended antecedent. If you have a type of pronoun and antecedent, you have a type of pronoun or antecedent, or gender or number, which is not the same as the noun, then you will not be able to tell you what the noun is going to be about. तो फॉर एग्जांपल अगर आप जिस तरह के मैंने पहले कहा कि आप सलीम का जिक्र कर रहे हैं और आप उसके लिए ही कह रहे हैं लेकिन आप जहां आप अगर आप कह रहे हैं सलीम वेंट टू द मार्केट ही बॉट एप्पल्स लेकिन अगर आप सलीम वेंट टू द मार्केट के बाद किसी और भी आ, मर्द का जिक्र आता है और फिर आप कह रहे हैं ही बॉट एप्पल्स तो फिर क्लियर नहीं होगा अगर आप कह रहे हैं सलीम वेंट टू द मार्केट अल्ताफ रोड अ बाइसिकल ही बॉट एप्पल्स तो ये नहीं पता चलेगा कि सलीम ने सेब खरीदे या अल्ताफ ने खरीदे सो यू नीड टू बी क्लियर हु इट इज दैट दी प्रोनाउन इज रिफरिंग टू सिमिलरली विद नंबर इफ यू आर यूजिंग अ प्रोनाउन अलोंग विद इस एंटीसीडेंट इन द सेम पैराग्राफ और इवन विद इन द सेम सेंटेंस देन मेक श्योर दैट नो अदर नाउन विद द सेम नंबर अपेयर्स विद बिटवीन बिटवीन दोज टू because otherwise your pronoun reference will be unclear let's have a look at some examples which will make this concept clearer when a second character arrives at the port before the first character has been unloaded the port stores the second character in the same register overwriting it ab yahan aap it ka pronoun istemal kar rahe hain lekin ye clear nahi hai ki kis kis cheez ko ye it jo hai ye kis cheez ko refer kar raha hai a clearer way would be When a second character arrives at the port before the first character has been unloaded, the port stores the second character in the same register as the first one, overwriting the first character. Here we have replaced it by the first character to make it clear that that is what we are referring to. One uh, main problem with the pronoun reference is also that the uh, the reference can be too broad. You will use a demonstrative. pronoun only if the connection to the intended antecedent of the pronoun is quite strong otherwise your pronoun's reference will be too broad and thus become unclear let's have a look at what we mean by this and what we mean when we say demonstrative pronouns the weak sentence is the sophisticated computer sound system lets the user input pitch and duration from the MIDI keyboard this facilitates musical transcription now does the word this refer to the sophisticated computer sound system or does it refer to letting uh, the user or does it refer to the inputting of pitch and duration this jo hai ye demonstrative pronoun hai lekin ye kis cheez ko refer kar raha hai the improved version would be Sophisticated computer sound systems let the user input pitch and duration from the MIDI key, uh, keyboard. This direct input facilitates musical transcription. अब इससे ये पता चल रहा है कि इस ये demonstrative pronoun के साथ direct input का phrase भी हमने लगा दिया ताकि ये clear हो रहा है कि किस चीज exactly किस चीज की बात हो रही है. Now coming to pronoun case. A pronoun can appear in one of three cases it can be subjective in which the pronoun functions as a subject it can be objective in which the pronoun functions as an object and it can be possessive in which the pronoun functions as a possessor we're going to have a look at a list which shows the subjective objective and possessive forms of the personal pronouns jaise ki aap dekh rahe hain subjective pronouns ho gaye I, you, he, she, it, we, they, who, whoever, जिसमें जो सब्जेक्ट uh, है वो प्रोनाउन के तौर पे लिखा जा सकता है 
ऑब्जेक्टिव प्रोनाउंस हो गए मी यू हिम हर इट अस देम होम होम एवर और पोजेसिव जब किसी चीज़ की पोजेशन की बात की जा रही है तब वो प्रोनाउंस हो गए माई योर हिज हर इट्स आवर देयर हुज हुज एवर यू नीड टू बी केयरफुल दैट यू यूज दीज थ्री डिफरेंट टाइप्स ऑफ प्रोनाउंस इन द करेक्ट केस एंड दैट यू यूज देम वेयर दे आर अप्रोप्रिएट अदरवाइज यू विल बी writing sentences which are unclear and the uh, reference will not be effective in this lecture we have learned how to improve our sentences by improving lack of parallelism uh, how to improve them by changing choppy sentences into uh, better structured sentences how to avoid misplaced modifiers which uh, could be either because they are interrupting the sentence structure also we looked at uh modifiers of nouns and adverb modifiers we also looked at dangling modifiers and how they can make uh, for unclear sentences we also looked at how to avoid uh, the use of double negatives because two double ne uh, two negatives or a double negative in a sentence actually leads to a positive uh, meaning we looked at inappropriate shifts in tense mood person and voice and also we looked at the sequence of tenses and how to make sure that we will actually talk about the tenses uh, at the same time in which they occur we also looked at pronoun reference and how the incorrect use of pronouns can lead to unclear sentences we talked of two basic uh, reasons why pronouns could be would be used in a wrong manner it could either be because of unclear pronoun reference or because of broad pronoun reference and then we looked at the different pronoun cases the three types of pronoun cases subjective objective and possessive and we talked of how to use those in the appropriate way with this we come to the end of our session on uh, reviewing uh, the uh, language of sentences in the next lecture we will go uh, down to the micro level and look at words and phrases and how we can uh, employ those better Uh, to improve our language in our business and technical communication until then allah hafiz